friends and welcome back to my channel. So I'm heading into London today. I'm meeting up with a friend that I met at uni a few years back, um, Charlotte. So our plan is to do basically a bookshop crawl. Um, so I'm really excited. We have about 10 bookshops on the list. So I guess we'll see how we get on because granted that is a lot of bookshops um, and with it being Saturday as well London's going to be heaving so I guess we'll see how we get on but I think it's going to be a fun day and hopefully I can show you some different bookshops that are in London if you're ever visiting or if you live nearby. backpack but it's covered in mud so I'm gonna wipe it down. <laughs> I use it so much and it just gets absolutely covered in mud honestly. it's been a couple of days since my bookshop crawl in London with Charlotte and I honestly had the best time. Um, it's definitely something worth doing if you are going on a trip to London, if you live near London, booking in this kind of bookshop crawl where you plan out the different places that you want to go to. I was really nerdy in my planning. I went down to like the tube stops and everything. Um, 
and I definitely was a little bit too optimistic with how many bookshops we'd get to, but we still managed to get to some of my favourite ones. And a lot of them Charlotte hadn't been to before because she doesn't live as close to London as I do. And so it was really good to kind of explore them together and just spend the day surrounded by books. So um, I'm going to walk through the schedule. I will tell you what was originally on the list, what we didn't go to and the places that we did manage to get to, what books I ended up getting um, while we were there. And yeah, that's pretty much what I'm going to cover. So because we were coming from different areas, I was coming on the Oxford line, whereas Charlotte was coming from up north, um, we decided we'd meet actually at Baker Street because that was kind of more of a central location that we could both get to. So um, we both made our way there and then um, from Baker Street, the first bookshop that we went to was Daunt Books, which is such an iconic bookshop. You've probably seen this on social media quite a lot. It's got the beautiful balconies and all the signs are in this classic green colour. Um, it's a beautiful bookshop and we actually ended up staying in there for about 45 minutes which was way longer than I was anticipating but there was just so much to explore there's so many different books and also with it being the first bookshop that we went to we kind of felt like we had all the time in the world which time went so fast it was unbelievable so I actually ended up getting two things from Daunt Books I got this book which is The Last House on Needless Street by Katrina Ward um, Charlotte's actually already read this before so she pretty much sold it to me. She picked it up and she was like this book's really weird and there's even a chapter when the cat narrates it and I was like thank you I'll take that please. Um, and so on the blurb it says this is a story of a murderer a stolen child revenge. This is a story of Ted who lives with his young daughter Lauren and his cat Olivia in an ordinary house at the end of an ordinary street. All these things are true and yet some of them are lies. An unspeakable secret binds the family together and when a new neighbour moves in the next door, the truth may destroy them all. Because there's something buried in the dark forest at the end of Needless Street, but it's not what you think. So I'm excited. It sounds kind of a bit creepy, a bit mysterious. Um, Stephen King says, I haven't read anything this exciting since Gone Girl. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It should be good. I'm going to take this one on holiday with me. Um, and then I also had to get an iconic Daunt Books book tote. Um, so I had to sell a kidney to buy this because it was way more expensive than I was expecting. Um, it wasn't really that expensive. It was like £23, though, which is a lot for like a tote bag. But anyway, I got it in green because they said that is kind of the classic colour, which makes sense. It's super sturdy. So that's good news. I can pass it down generations. Um, so I can, I'll get my money's worth. It's fine. Um, but yeah, I'm really chuffed with it. It's really good. And, you know, I feel like if you're going to be book shopping in London, you've got to have a Dawn Book tote bag because um, that's just iconic and a staple for a book lover. So, yeah, I got that one. Charlotte got the same one, but she got it in red with the gold print on it. So and she actually paid more than me. So after we left the rest of the day when we were walking around, we we're going to all these different bookshops. We kept bumping into like so many people who had one as well. So it's clearly a staple for the book lover in London. So from Daunt Books, we actually ended up going for lunch because um, by that point it was half 12. And so um, we went for lunch at Pizza Express because that was just across the road. And I ended up getting the gluten-free vegan margarita, but then I added chicken on because I'm not vegan, I'm just dairy free. So it's always fun when I eat out, <laughs> trying to explain to the to the waiters what I want. But this was really nice. I really enjoyed it actually. Um, and it's always nice to get pizza because that's not always an option for me. So um, that's what I had. Charlotte had a tomato pasta. Um, hers was just normal, normal tomato pasta, which I have had before, but it's like uber spicy, too hot for me. But Charlotte likes spicy food. So she was all good with that. Um, from Pizza Express, we actually went back across to Baker Street to jump on the tube. And from there, we actually went over to Piccadilly, which I actually had three bookshops in mind for this area. But when we got off the tube at Piccadilly, it was just heaving, which isn't surprising. I was kind of expecting it with it being a Saturday and Piccadilly is just such a busy area of London anyway. Um, so it took us so long to just walk down the street because there was that many people. Um, but the original plan that I had for this area was Hatchards, Waterstones and Haywood Hill. We actually only ended up covering Hatchards, which to be honest with you, I was fine with because Hatchards is actually the original Waterstones. Um, and this is an absolutely beautiful bookshop. Um, like I said, it's a bit awkward to get to if it's a weekend. And unfortunately there was loads of scaffolding up when we got there. But yeah, this is an amazing bookshop and um, it's multiple floors, so we'll take you forever to explore. <laughs> we only actually ended up going on the floors that we were interested in just because we knew that we were a bit tight on time. 
Um, but yeah, we did spend quite a while in here looking around and Charlotte did buy a book from this particular bookshop and also she got a bookmark. Um, I didn't buy anything, but the lady at the desk did give us both a free bookmark as well, which kind of looks like a golden ticket in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which is kind of cool. Um, but I've added it to my bookmark collection because um, I don't really use bookmarks, but I do like to collect bookmarks. So um, I added it in there and that was quite nice of them. The good thing about Hatches as well is because it's the original Waterstones, you can use your Waterstones card in there. So that's always good to, to know also. So this actually ended up being the only bookshop we covered in Piccadilly and at which point we headed to Green Park to jump back on the tube and it was a little bit of a hop skip and a jump to try and get to the next location. We went from Green Park to Leicester Square and then across to Tottenham Court Road um, and then from Tottenham Court Road there were three bookshops that I had planned in and we actually managed to make all three. So on the list for Tottenham Court Road was London Book Review Bookshop, the Atlantis Bookshop and also Foils. Um, so London Book Review is I think pretty popular. This isn't a very big bookshop. It's two floors but they also have a cafe as well which is really nice actually in there. Um, I've sat in there before. It does get pretty busy um, but if you can get there on like a weekday it's usually a bit quieter. Um, but yeah we had a look around this bookshop. Um, so I actually got this book from there it's called Enchantment it's by Catherine May so it says feeling bone tired anxious and overwhelmed by the rolling news cycle and the pandemic age Catherine May seeks to unravel the threads of life wound too tightly could there be another way to live one that feels more meaningful more grounded in the places beneath our feet one that would allow us to feel more connected more rested and at ease even as seismic changes unfold on the planet Craving a different path may explore restorative properties of the natural world and begins to rekindle her sense of wonder. It's a journey that takes her from sacred wells to wind moors, from cradling seas to star falls. Through deliberate attention and ritual, she finds nourishment and more helpful relationships to the world around her. Enchantment is an invitation to each of us to experience life in all its sensual complexity and to find the beauty waiting for us there. So... Uh, yeah, um, actually Charlotte picked this up and she was like reading the blurb and she said, you know, oh, this this sounds just like you. <laughs> and I was like, oh, OK, I'll read it. And um, I've actually already read half of this book already. Um, it is really enjoyable. What's actually really funny is the the author of the book is actually diagnosed with autism, which I am also. So maybe that's why when Charlotte read the blurb, she was like, it sounds just like you. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's quite enjoyable. I'm enjoying it so far. Obviously, I'm already halfway through. Um, but when I finish it, I'm sure it'll turn up on one of my um, what I've read recently um, book videos at some point. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a good one so far. So that is what I ended up getting from London Book Review. The next bookshop that we went to was actually the Atlantis Bookshop. This bookshop in particular is actually really well known in kind of Wiccan witchcraft communities. It was really popular with a lot of kind of more famous magical practice practitioners, people like Gerald Gardner, who was the founder of the Wiccan faith, um, used to go and meet, meet people there. Um, so yeah, I've seen this one in a lot of documentaries anyway, but I've also visited quite a few times. This wasn't my first time going there. They have a really great book selection if you are interested in things like witchcraft, Wiccan practices, um, history of paganism, that kind of thing. Or tarot, there's actually a lot of books on tarot and actually they sell a lot of tarot decks in there as well. So um, it's a really good one to check out. And the front of this bookshop is absolutely stunning. It's this beautiful turquoise color and they always have you know books out at the front, it's super small though, really tiny, so you can't fit that many people in. So from the Atlantis bookshop, I actually got this, which is Sea Magic. I'd actually seen this in Watkins Books, which is a, another bookshop that's in Covent Garden. Um, and I took a photo of it because I just couldn't, I couldn't get it that day because I was buying too many other books. Um, but I knew it was on my list to get and And I'm actually going to the coast next week. So I thought it's a good time to pick something like this up. Um, it says Sea Magic, connecting with the ocean's energy, which I think is going to be really cool i love being by the sea and i'm really lucky that where we go on holiday actually um the beach close by isn't that busy so it's quite nice for just taking some time for yourself and just embracing the, the sea's energy so yeah it says purifying mesmerizing and transformative the sea has long been celebrated for its beauty and mysterious power by connecting to the ocean's energy you can deepen your experience with the natural world and enrich your life whether you're near or far from the coast sea magic takes you on a unique voyage of spiritual rejuvenation exploring various types of shells sea creatures both real and mythical call upon sea deities and saints to amplify your spiritual practice and try a wide array of relaxation exercises and meditative techniques so yeah, kind of excited to 
read this. I think there's a good time for me to pick this up as well because I'm feeling quite burnt out and exhausted. So excited to be by the sea, excited to be re-energized. And yeah, that was the book that I got there. And then from that bookshop, we actually ended up going to Foils, which is a probably one that's quite well known as well. Um, I think it's kind of iconic for the this quote that it has on the wall. It says, um, welcome book lovers, you are among friends. Um, you may have seen that on social media and things. So that's where we went to next. Again, this is a massive bookshop, so you could spend forever in here. Um, but compared to some of the other ones that we went to, which um, were kind of more classic, like Daunt Books and Hatchards, which are older bookshops, this one definitely has a more modern vibe, but it's always a really cool one to go to. They also sell board games in there as well. Um, it's a little bit more like just the normal Waterstones, um, but it spoils. And <laughs> and they have just a massive variety of different books. So um, yeah, this one's definitely worth checking out, even just to get a photo of the quote, because I think that's pretty cool. Um, Charlotte did actually get a book from here, I can't remember, but I'll run through all of the books that she ended up buying. I don't think I bought any from, from this particular bookshop. And that was the last one that we actually did in this area. So I'm just gonna check my schedule where we went next, because I can't quite remember. Um, okay, so we went back to Tottenham Court Road and we got on the tube and we went to Euston. Um, so at Euston, there was a couple of bookshops we wanted to go to. One was Judd Books, which I'd never been to before. And the other one was Gaze the Word, which I'd seen a lot online and um, they specialise in LGBTQ plus books. Um, so I thought I'd go there because there was a specific book I was after. It's called Rainbow History Class, Your Guide Through Queer and Trans History. It's by Hannah McLennany. McLennany? McLennany. Um, and I figured if I was going to buy it, then it's a good opportunity to also support a bookshop, which is LGBT plus focused um because they support the community and so that's why I wanted to get it there but I actually couldn't find it that bookshop was so busy as well there were so many people in there and it is a really nice bookshop it isn't very big considering how busy it was so I did feel a little bit claustrophobic in there but I think I'm definitely going to go back on a weekday where I can actually kind of browse a bit more and not feel so cramped um, but yeah that is just the consequence of book shopping on a Saturday um, and we did see Judd books because that wasn't too far away uh, but we were really short on time at this point and we both really wanted to make the last bookshop on the list which was Word on the Water which is actually just behind King's Cross on the canal um, so this is a really cool bookshop again one that you may have seen on social media it's a bookshop that's also in a canal boat um, I have been here a few times it's very small obviously because it's a canal boat but they did open up the front um, and add extra books outside. There was music playing, there's these two guys, one of them was playing the drums, one of them was playing the saxophone, it was, you know, really chilled out vibe, uh, really nice, the sun was out and we were on the canal and it was lovely and yeah, it was a really nice way to wrap up the day. I didn't get any from there. Again, I held off to the end because I wanted to get um, the last book in my Words of Collector's Edition copies, um, my Pride and Prejudice Edition, which I don't have yet. And they do sell them on Word on the Water, but they, I think they must have sold out of the Pride and Prejudice because it wasn't, wasn't there, but they did have some of the others. So it was a shame. And then we did just head to a coffee shop to grab a hot chocolate and I picked up some party pigs before we both headed home in opposite directions. So I also have another book that I ended up getting on the same day and that's because Charlotte got me this book for my birthday. Uh, my birthday's not until June, but this was the only opportunity we'd see each other before my birthday. Um, and it's Fairies, Elves and Goblins, The Old Stories by Rosalind Caven. Um, so really excited to read this. It's basically just loads of short stories and folklore surrounding fairies and elves and goblins. It's also got a lot of like really iconic images. Um, some of them you may have seen before. And I think I may take this on holiday as well. I'll see. Um, <laughs> I've got a lot of books I want to take with me. So um, Charlotte did pick up a few books as well. Um, most of them were ones that she's already read, but she just wanted a nice collector's copy of them because a lot of them she'd read on Kindle. So she got Clytemnestra, she got ABC Murders, um, Rebecca, and I feel like she got The Colour Purple as well, or maybe The Bell Jar. Oh, and, and she got um, Good Omens, that's it, that was the last one. Um, she picked some really cool copies though. I love The Good Omens one, even though I've not read that book, it looks very much like the Adams Family comics. So I think that one looks really cool. And also the Rebecca that she got is really nice as well. So um, she got some good finds that she was really happy with. She doesn't often buy physical copies. She either uses Kindle or the library. So, so I think it was nice for her to get some collector copies. 
um yeah we had such a lovely day it was a lot of fun and if you're looking for a bookish alternative to a pub crawl then bookshop crawl is the way to go I think there are honestly like so many bookshops in London we could have gone to I think if I was to do it again I'd definitely focus on a few more independent bookshops um but I think this is a good starting point as I was saying Charlotte's not been to a lot of the kind of iconic bookshops in London so it was a good place to start um and then yeah I think next time there's a few others that we'd like to focus on but yeah that is pretty much everything I will add my tube and bookshop order below just in case anyone wants to follow the same route as us um there's maybe easier ways to go this is just my experience getting around london i'm not from london originally i've lived in the south of england for a few years now so i am in and out of london pretty regular but there may be easier routes around quicker routes around who knows um i'd love to know as well if you have any suggestions of bookshops in london that i should check out and um, that weren't on this list because yeah i'm always open to suggestions of bookshops that i can visit and yeah that's pretty much everything for this video um i don't think i'm going to have a video coming out next week because i am going on a holiday and i've decided to just take a real break um from everything from the podcast from this channel from instagram from work <laughs> so yeah i definitely i'm kind of in need of a, a bit of downtime so i'm gonna take the week off go on holiday and um i'll be back after that um, but yeah, that's everything from me and I will see you in another video.